Hello, Embedded World 2024. We've come onto the booth here to meet Ryan from Digilent, who's going to tell us all about testing systems, testing FPGAs, and how Digilent do that, and help you do that. Perfect, Ryan, yes. Ryan, by the way, is from Malta. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very interesting thing to say, yes. Um, I'm from the Maltese <laughs> island, a lot of sun. And uh, yes, basically I collaborate very well with Digilent. Um, uh, Digilent, uh, as we were speaking, speaking before, they, uh, they specialize in uh, testing and measurement equipment yep. and also on FPGA boards. Uh, for example, this project that we are seeing here is a software-defined radio, which I have designed around um, Digilent's FPGA boards. Uh, right. These in particular are the Eclipse Z7, just explain software-defined radio for us. Yes, so a software-defined radio is a radio which, using software, you can change the way it works to make it to connect to anything you want. Right. So, imagine a platform which, using software, you can connect it to Bluetooth, but on the other day, you can connect it also to Wi-Fi. Right. Using the same hardware. That I is a software-defined radio. Very good. Carry on. Perfect. So, basically, the Eclipse Z7 from Digilent is adding 7,000... Uh, system on chip board which has two CCG connectors which are very high speed so basically they can be used as a digital interface to pass very high speed data from one point to the other so for a software defined radio application where you need a lot of data rate uh, megahertz and megahertz of data rate uh, these boards are perfect so basically that is why I decided to use this system for a software defined radio uh, what we are doing also, we are using also the ADP2230. It is a new device from Digilent uh, in order to test this audio transmission system using this software-defined radio. The idea is basically to put the 2230 in the middle of the system so we can generate and read the waveforms we are sending from one point to the other. Um, the system is perfect. Yes. So just explain to me, you've uh, explained what so software-defined radio is. Yes. So. Explain to me why you would have to test that. What, 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 what's the reason that you would say, right, I need to understand, is it about um, signal integrity? Is it about signal speed? What is, it, what is it that drives the need for testing in a software-defined radio? Correct. So basically what we are testing here is the result of the signal uh, of the software-defined radio. Right. We are not testing the software-defined radio itself. Right. So, the software defined... That's important. Yes, yes, that is very important because to test a software defined radio, you need gigahertz of range. Yep. Here, um, we have 125 mega samples per second. So, we are testing the audio signals which we are feeding to the system. Right. However, using this, we can test how effective the software defined radio is and how efficient it is in transmitting successfully our data very good. Very from good. one point to so the So, what next. we're trying to understand here is you have this software-defined radio here. Yes. This is, if you like, the transmitter. Correct. This is the receiver. Correct. And you've got to make sure you're trying to understand that what was sent from here is delivered here. Correct. And this is what this box does. Correct. That okay. is exactly what that box does. Very good. Yes. And it does it using uh, our software used uh, called Waveforms. It is very easy to use and is, it is very effective, as you can see, to see both what you are transmitting and okay. what you are receiving so back. So shall we just, just turn this to camera? and maybe you can explain to the watchers exactly what's going on here. So this box is monitoring this sender to this receiver. Correct. To understand that what it sent is delivered here. Correct. And this box is monitoring that. So what are we seeing here on the screen? Correct. So what we are seeing on the screen on the bottom side is where we are generating our signals. Um, we have this menu and we, where we can decide on the frequency of the signal, the amplitude, the shape, and we can also inject other um, signals on top of it. We can modulate it, we can insert noise, basically anything you, you, you would need from a function generator. So this signal that we are generating is being outputted from the first output right here. And on the top, we can see uh, um, uh, the oscilloscope input, uh, which is basically a copy, as, as we expect, of the signal we are generating using the signal generator. Um, as you can see, you can split the screen to see them both at the same time, and that is obviously very efficient when you are testing in your home or in the laboratory. Yes, the system is completely configurable. Um, you can change the amount of samples that you see, and you can change how wide you see it. So you can maybe analyze more in detail the signal you are getting. Additionally, you can also run 
uh, mathematical functions on it. Um, mathematical functions like an F50. So you can see the, the frequency component of the signal you have uh, on a, uh, as a graphical representation. Right. And is that is that is that a feature that you put into there, or does the or does the user have to configure it, configure that themselves? That is a built-in feature of the software. That is a built-in feature. Yes. Of the and uh, all the user has to do is simply uh, click on the F50 button and give it the parameters. Right. Right. So just to, one last question: If you didn't have this box here, how would somebody go about? doing that without your software in this box? Well, it, it would quite be a problem. Most probably it would include um, uh, a number of oscilloscopes and function generators, separate hardware. And uh, for this cost, I think it's impossible it to have impossible. Ma yeah, multiple, multiple, because once again, you're going to need a separate oscilloscope and the function generator. Right. So that's two devices which you will need. Right, right. So the absolute, the, 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 the beauty of this is Understanding the signal. Correct. A configurable software system that you can look at. Correct. And this is a fraction of the cost of the hardware Correct. that you might need to buy to create that same thing. Correct. Using Correct. extra hardware. And additionally, um, besides the analog output and input, which we are using in this project, it has also a logic analyzer and the power supply. Right. So you really have got a lot in this little box. Yeah. It's basically three or four devices in one. Right. Right. So. This little box, three or four, it's, it's taking the place of three or four boxes that you would use to create that kind of measurement. Exactly. All in one place. Exactly. Thank you, Ryan. That's a really good introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.